to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. In the Israel episode? Yeah. That's been our least well-performing episode. That's the best way to say that, I guess. Our least performing episode in a long time. We should have named it Israel and Palestine. Sex should part, have. Well, sex I just, part two. Well, it, even, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, perf- it's performed just the same on YouTube. I don't know how people search for stuff on podcasts, but like even just like our normal numbers of just like the people that listen to stuff, like it's just not the same. I wonder Did if it's because of spring break. That might have been it. That's what kind of what I was thinking. But it came out last week, the last week. Because we have like a third to last week of March. Most people yeah, that listen five, to it are... Uh, Tuesdays in March. So yeah, so the either the third or fourth week in March is when it came out. Um, well, actually, there were spring breaks that were different across yeah. Texas. Yeah. So if you guys haven't listened to our Israel episode, go listen to Israel. Golly, come on, learn about wow. Israel. What are you doing? I don't even know if this part's going to be in there, but if it is, yeah. listen. <laughs> but we have so. we have a hundred <laughs> people true, yeah. now on uh, YouTube, right? Yeah, we have a hundred oh, and we have hundred or hundred one. Uh, quick update: um, We will not be doing Patreon. We will probably be doing a different service. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, update on that. Yeah. yeah. There was some sketchy stuff going on with Patreon with really? like some of the, uh, um, what's it called? Where, like what Twitter's doing where they like cancel people's accounts or some like weird stuff Ooh. like that on yes. Patreon. Hmm. Did you hear about that, Steven? I heard something about it. I didn't hear the details of it. So yeah, I was be doing Venmo. You just send us money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, and really, my Venmo is it's actually a one way deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, our really what we're trying to do, like this is this is a ministry of the four fifty six church. Like yeah, four fifty six yeah. is is the one funding all this because we feel like this is part of our ministry at the church. But our thought with doing Patreon is like being able to have a bigger reach. Like just to be honest, like we would love to actually do a little bit of marketing. Yeah, because we feel like we want more people to listen. Yeah, not so that we can make money, but just so that more have a bigger audience. And the only way for us to well, I think market at this point is, to, is to have some income. Yeah, I think at this point we'd be really excited to recover our costs every month. Yeah, which yeah, would be, yeah, which would be great. So yeah. Patreon was the idea, but after looking into it, I think Patreon is not going to be the right mm-hmm. move for us because uh, we would easily oh deplatform. We would easily get deplatformed. <laughs> yes. I think on <laughs> Patreon, uh, maybe if I wasn't talking, we'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So stay yeah, stay updated with that. Follow us on social media. We can just wrap up that. We can wrap the right. episode right now. Yeah, hey, so thanks everybody. Yeah. Keep Christ's core. <laughs> what can <laughs> be simpler, simpler than, than that? that? We'll see you guys next week. Man, nah. That was, uh, that was like three minutes. <laughs> we should do an episode like that one week. Just be like, all right, listen to last week's episode. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, hey everybody. How you doing, Pierce? I'm so sleepy. Man, you said you were tired, Ryan. I'm yep. tired. My daughter's been do- so I was going to say she's been doing this thing, but she has this unbelievable diaper rash that we're trying to figure out what's the cause of it because she, man, it, I, so you guys, you guys are real parents. Maybe, oh, maybe this might be part of my inauguration. <laughs> no, this is, this um, is your world. We have no idea now. It's been too long. Yeah. I know. True. So like, You're the expert. golly, I, man, the whole like hurts me more than it hurts you. I mean, I wasn't spanking my child, but like the whole hurts me more than it hurts you mentality. Like I was just trying to like clean her bottom. Like, Oh, that's so bad. And she had that rash and her, Oh, that sucks. Her, like, it wasn't just like, I'm crying normal cry. I I haven't heard like a tortured cry from her before. I've heard the, I need my mom cry. I've heard the, I fell down cry. I've heard all of that cry. I haven't heard the, like, I'm in unbelievable pain and I don't know why I cry. And my dad's inflicting it on me. Like, I know it's very specific, but I was just like, I've got, I, if, if I don't clean up this poop, it will just get more irritated. It'll, like, it'll get more, it's bad and we need to get everything cleaned up. And so we went from like her changing table to the bath, back to her changing table. And then I was like, well, not everything came out. And so I was like, maybe I can get it out. And it was, she was so bad. And so I we went back to the bath and I was like, if I can just like splash so much just up in there and like, maybe we can like the most least pain possible. But anyway, the next day, most of it cleared up and I was like, cool, maybe that was it. But then she pooped again and it all came back like uh, worse. And so we don't know if there's something in her diet that's like acidic, that's like oh, yeah, causing yeah. her poop to be that way to like irritate her. But anyway, uh, back to poop, you guys. Bring, yeah, you got to bring the doctor in. Um, yeah. So, Dr. We're, Pepper. so yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're keeping an eye on that, trying to keep an eye on the diet and if things don't go, or her diet, and if things don't go away, 
Uh, we'll bring in Dr. Pepper and then we'll call her pediatrician. Mm. And <laughs> Dude, we, uh, we so, used like the, the butt paste, um, the droves or whatever, butt paste. Mm-hmm. I had to look it up. Because, oh yeah. It's stuff's dope. And, uh, and like when I can't remember which one of our kids had really, really bad diarrhea, but I would like just slather that on there. Like mm-hmm. it was like a quarter of an inch thick on Dude. their whole butt. Cause I was just like, because the other bad thing is if what you don't, was that brand? if you so don't put a, if you don't put enough on there, then the diaper, oh, yeah, 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 then yeah. The diaper sticks to there's it. There's also, uh, someone told us about this stuff you can buy at like, uh, like farm and ranch supply stores, even tractor supply that they use for mm-hmm. axle wheels. And it has, oh, wait. <laughs> but it has, <laughs> just, it has right. like some kind of like, uh, has something else in it that like, that's, that just covers. Yeah. The, it's just the pace. This mm-hmm. has something else in it to like help the yeah, yeah. thing go away. Hannah made, I don't even know what's in it, but she like made a concoction la- like a month or two ago and it doesn't go bad. Well, I don't know how long it takes to go bad, but it's all like How's medicinal taste? stuff. Oh, okay. Dude, so it's, it, we, she put it in one of our sauce containers and, so, <laughs> and it has to be refrigerated. Uh-oh. <laughs> and so like I told her, I was like, put that in a bag it's, and it's white too. So I'm like, I don't know if that's mayonnaise. I don't know if that's like any of the sauces we made. And so I was like, you put that all the way in the back. And uh, so, thank, so thank sandwich. goodness I haven't accidentally put that's it on good. something. But we, she was like, I think we have some of that sauce still in the refrigerator. So I had to dig like behind the eggs, back behind everything. And when I found that, and yeah, same thing. I put it just thick and it was cold and I could tell how much that soothed her. It felt good, yeah. And, uh, it, it sucks though because you like, can't really explain to her that you're not trying to I hurt know. her. And I like, I just, once we got everything back on, I just like, I just held oh, her close yeah. and I was just like, it's going to be okay. Like I hurt Asher the other day and felt so stinking Your son's bad. 13. With the, with the butt paste? But it, yeah. <laughs> He, uh, <laughs> hold still, <laughs> sit down, man. He lost a tooth recently, but he has mm. braces on the top. And oh, that sucks. He lost a tooth in the back that was holding the wire in. That's where the oh, wire was. No. So it, that tooth came out and then the wire was just poking him oh, in the gums. It. It's awful. So mm. I took some clippers and clipped it out, but we didn't, I didn't clip it close enough to the brace in the front. And so his, it was poking his lip. So I was like, okay, let me just cut that last piece. Be real still. I said, I'm just going to get it. He goes, it's going to hurt. I was like, no, it shouldn't hurt at all. Just hold your head real still. Well, when I clipped that little piece of wire, the wire shot into his mouth Ooh. and hit him in the hit him in the lip. And his eyes flashed. He was like, dad. He was like, you said it wouldn't hurt. I was like, buddy, I'm so, and blood was like pouring out of his mouth. I was like, I am so, so sorry. Man. And I was just trying to help him. And I just, ah. Oh. And you I, shot it with a wire. I did. I think you could put butt paste on the inside. Poor of guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, right? <laughs> guys, when oh. you guys were a baby, I found this miracle paste. Come back here. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad, though. I still use butt paste. I don't have a rash or anything. I just find that it soothes me. I just put it all over my body every <laughs> night before I go to bed. You know, whenever. <laughs> yeah. Some people use sunscreen. I prefer, I prefer <laughs> butt paste. <laughs> you know, after you eat at Panda Express, a little bit of I butt hear, paste. I hear if you mix the essence of Steven in with the butt paste, it smells really good. Hey, another product <laughs> hey. idea. Hey. When did you smell that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry man. to hear that. That's miserable. It's okay. So I've just, because of that, she'll wake up in the middle of the night like in pain. And so we've been past three nights, she'll wake up between one and five. And I'm like, well, you can come sleep with us. But she's also slowly learning that if I wake up in the middle of the night, I can just go sleep with mom and dad. So <laughs> now we're trying to figure out how we're going to condition her out well, you, of out of that. Yeah, because didn't you guys just transition her to the like the big To her big bed? girl bed, yeah. So now she's thinking, oh, I'm out of the crib. I get to I can I just go, go bang on the dad. door until they come over here. Yeah. <laughs> What's crazy was that her first night, before she had any pain or anything, the first night where she did that, we uh, she got up, she went to the door, we heard the handle shake. We were in the living room and I was like, let's just pull up the camera feed and see what she does. She went over there and then just like a, shook the handle twice, then went back to bed and crawled back into bed on her own. Like all, her first night and I was like what a this is amazing awesome. this is great and then she got the diaper rash from hell and so now we're gonna have to figure out how to relearn yeah. that but it's you know parent stuff yeah learning yeah. one day one almost day, a real parent one day I'll be there <laughs> one day well hey as you guys transition with me to being a real parent let's go on over to the PCC let's step on over to the corner hey sit on down let's do it uh, so today what we have planned Regardless of how I talk about it, I feel like I have to do this. This might be my first PCC disclaimer. Okay. Uh, Regardless of how I talk about it, I feel like it's going to sound racist. And I didn't realize that. I know, right? Until about 30 seconds ago. So I'd like (laughs) to apologize for any people of color out there that this might come across racist. What do you mean out there? Right here and and out, and out there. Well, we're off to a good start. <laughs> I know, right? So even my disclaimer, it's not going. It's not going. Wow, Pierce, it's not going well. So 
there's no intentionality behind this that is racist. And I'm going to do, to strive to do a good job of saying what I mean in the midst of this. One of the things that I love about the PCC is that oftentimes over the course of the weeks leading up to us recording, um, I know you guys are surprised that we don't just, you're, this isn't like recording it live into your ears, that we do pre-record <laughs> these and upload them. But into the weeks leading up to us recording, I'm just impacted by what's happening around me. And then I'm contemplating, I'm thinking about it. So it's literally just, I don't have necessarily a lot of the time, super solid ground of what my thoughts are. The only thing that I'm I'm really solid on is Jesus. <laughs> like <laughs> everything else, I'm still kind of in the midst of learning and molding and shifting and changing. But Jesus being Lord and Savior, 100% on that. Yeah. Definitely, I know that. Um, and so <laughs> I know, I know that boy, I got it. I got it down. Um, so this happened really recently. Um, and then what I was going to say is that Mike is here to correct me to say what I, <laughs> what I meant to say. <laughs> uh, and he, look, you guys doing video is a person of color. So I, he can't be racist based off today's standard, right? <laughs> that's how that works. I, I feel like that's a fair statement. <laughs> there you go. Probably there's a lot of people don't feel that way about me. <laughs> Every time I say something like, it, like when it's real hot outside and I say, man, it sucks to be white today. <laughs> <laughs> it does though, right? I mean, my, you guys My poor burn. daughter. My oh, poor daughter's dude. outside for 30 seconds. She's, She's blood burning. red. Like, psh. Yeah. Anyway. It's a true statement. So, uh, end of March, um, there was a, uh, I'm going to butcher this name. I knew I would. It's uh, Katanji Brown Jackson. We'll say Miss Jackson. For now, that's a that's a good song, though, right? <laughs> was not nominated for the Supreme Court, and she went through. I didn't, I don't know how. I never, yeah, I don't know how. I didn't know how this like period worked, where they're like they, they she was before the entire Senate, right? And they right. had this period of time to ask her questions, to kind of interview her. Did she have to go through each and every senator, or was it just a chosen group of senators? I don't know. I didn't see all the ins and outs of it. So again, I'm still figuring these out. You guys listening and watching. I'm learning these things. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, I mean, it happened twice in the last, but anyway, go ahead. No, no, what I was yeah. going to say is that like, what I meant by that is like, I don't, I don't research all of this thoroughly. And yeah, yeah. how it happens. Got present it. my case. This is me like, oh, hey, this happened. Here's my thoughts. Here's my thoughts. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know exactly how everything worked with the, how somebody gets into the Supreme Court, but um, the way that it's been memefied and thrown out there on the internet is, um, a black woman being basically being yelled at by a bunch of white men is basically like how I've been seeing it thrown out a whole bunch. Really? Uh, yeah, that's how I've been. Because I see clips of well, white women interviewing her in the Senate too. But like, oh, really? Well, I also saw Ted Cruz, which was a Hispanic man. And I did see the, yeah. the conversation between yeah. her, her, and the other, and the, uh, the black congressman as well. That right. was yeah. that was a good conversation. It's just because so people are trying I've to give seen, a biased viewpoint. Yeah, right I've now. I've seen other sides as well, but I've seen a lot of the. So and where I'm going with this is I've seen the. I saw a post the other day that was comparing her being the phrase, the phrasing they used was being berated by white men. They compared her response of grace and poise and being calm um, to the intense, the intensity of Brett Kavanaugh's trial of how he responded to being questioned on being under trial. And then they proceeded to say, look at how amazing all black women are and how terrible all white men are. And then they made the oh, entire so thing. Oh yeah. Based off of two experiences. Based off of two experiences. And I was like, oh, well, you can't do that. <laughs> like that was like, I read, I was reading this and I got down to sentence four and I was like, oh no, like you can't, you can't do that. And so what I am not saying to be clear is I'm not saying the opposite of that. Like, no, 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 white men are great and black women are terrible. Not saying that whatsoever. But what I am saying is you can definitely look at this situation and say, look at, I mean, whoever you support, I don't know all the ins and outs of either one of these situations. I'm just a dumb guy that doesn't know very much. <laughs> but whether or not whoever you support, you can look at this situation, say it is this person who made this meme. I would say, no, you can't say that. What you can say, though, is... Man, I don't feel like Brett Kavanaugh really handled this situation well at all. Sure. Look at what he did. Man, look at how Miss Jackson really handled this so well. I mean, I, and, and if this person who made this meme supports her, which it seems like she does, or he does, whoever made the meme, um, they can say, man, I would like somebody like that to represent us in the Supreme Court. I would like somebody who is full of grace, who's full of poise, who seems to be patient, who seems to be handling themselves in this way. Which is funny because 
that has nothing to do with being someone on the Supreme I know, Court. Right? Yeah. Like it's it's the people who like who like didn't vote for Trump because they didn't like that he was mean. Oh, true. Yeah, they made you it all about. You take an old sleepy dude person. who has no freaking idea what he's doing over someone who's mean. Like, it just, like, we're looking for nice people in these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, let me just add something on the racist side. Is it not racist to, like, identify her as a black woman in this whole thing? Like, true. Like, why, why does it have to have anything to do with her? If we want race to be gone, I like Morgan Freeman, like, years ago saying, if we want racism to be gone, stop talking about this it. This is an individual who is being, Yeah, is she yeah. qualified for the Supreme Court or not? Yeah, exactly. Regardless of her race. Yeah. And, I mean, we all know that she, the reason that Biden appointed her, because he said it, was because she was black and a woman. Wow. It doesn't mean that she's not qualified. Right. Yeah, but sucks, what he though. said was, this is why I'm appointing her. And so, I, like, mm. and so, like, that's the that's the problem with these conversations right I now, is the premise is is Sleepy Joe saying, here's why I'm doing this. And it's not it's not because of her qualifications. She could p- completely be qualified yeah, yeah, yeah. if he had just said, here's my nominee because she's qualified. But he's trying to he's trying to push an agenda. And so it has to be that she's black, which is yeah. funny because that actually is a hit on her. Yeah, like, she, it she's is. Apparently, oh, he's hitting on her? Yeah, he's hitting <laughs> Sorry. No, she's not. She's too Now, old. okay. <laughs> the no disclaimer. She's too old for that. <laughs> um, true. Oh. <laughs> oh man! I didn't say it though, oh. so it's okay. <laughs> but like, wow! Again, I don't know her qualifications. I didn't look a lot of this up. But like, yeah. if she's completely qualified, it actually, in my mind, deters from her accomplishments. Absolutely. If you say the only reason I'm appointing you is because you're black and a woman, that's like, yeah. Why the, why the crap did I go through all that effort to be great yeah, at what I, I do? I think she is really qualified. Yeah, 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 highly qualified. So like, that's that's the problem and, with this conversation is it yeah. becomes about something that is not the substance of what a Supreme exactly. Court justice should be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it strips and it away. How cool is it that we live in a country where someone that is like we have different races that are right that are qualified? Yeah. Yeah. Make that the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely make how that cool the conversation. How cool is it that my dad, yeah, from the other side of the world, was able to immigrate to the US and yeah. become what he is now? Yeah. Like that's this is an amazing country. What these memes do is it's you kill your country. You continue to have the walls built. You just yep. have a different painting. It's a caricature. On, you have different paintings yep. on the walls. That's it's, all you're doing. And it's on purpose. You're not tearing down a wall. Yeah. You're keeping the walls built. Nope. And as yep. someone of color, I'll tell you this. Like, I think the best way to break down those walls is to stop talking about color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here I am talking about it. Wow. Come on, Pierce. Dang, Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> and they well, use it like they're trying to make a point. And I'm just like, if I walked up and I was just like, Mikey, you're a pretty good guitar player for minority. <laughs> What? How, mess, what that how messed up is that, What does that, that have dude? to do with anything? But yeah. don't use all the time. Hey, Everybody's like, you know oh, yeah, yeah. I just thought about this. I bet I am the highest rated Filipino disc golfer in the world. <laughs> I bet Maybe. so. I don't know. I bet there's some. They don't have disc golf in the Philippines. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Why aren't you on that? I, I might be now. Yeah, yeah, right. I might change my Twitter handle. Like <laughs> make, today. It, make it your thing. <laughs> I also, someone also asked me uh, a few weeks ago at a disc golf tournament. Because I finally, oh, we didn't talk about this. I finally hit I a saw. thousand, a thousand rated in disc golf, which means yeah, dude, it's congrats. Gonna, and then I played a tournament the next weekend and it's played really bad, so it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna drop after this. But someone goes, I wonder if you're the highest rated pastor in the world, like oh, but there's not really a way to know except right. to go through the four hundred. 90 people that are rated higher than me yeah, and go through each one of those people and yeah, yeah, start yeah. calling them. See if they're pastors. <laughs> hey, excuse pastor. me. <laughs> excuse me. But I've been, I've been Blessings in, uh, and peace to you. Are you a pastor? <laughs> I am. I'm the highest rated Filipino in the world, which means that I should be granted automatically a pass to play on the Elite Series and the Pro Tour. Yeah. The Filipino Because it's, it's discriminatory flipper. against Filipinos to not put me in that, in that place. I can guarantee you, you would actually... Move up there. Well, funny enough, all I have to do is sign up early. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then make the whole thing about race. Though. <laughs> you see, they they bent to the. You race. were good at frisbee. If somebody told you you were good at frisbee golf for a Filipino, that immediately means you're really good, or really bad. We're the or, only or. one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. The only one. Yep. Oh man! But you can't take them too seriously because they called it frisbee golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. What if they said froth? Froth. Oh gosh, froth. Well, hey, hey, what are we talking about today, Ryan? <laughs> Pierce, thank you Racism. for that incredible uh, introduction. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we're going today to talk about spiritual gifts. And nice. this is uh, in response to a good friend of ours down in Humble named Maddie. And hey, she, Maddie. Hey, Maddie. And uh, she and her husband listen, and she called me up a few weeks ago and was asking me, hey, have you guys done uh, one on spiritual gifts yet? 
And I was like, I honestly don't know. And so I had to kind of scroll through our, <laughs> our list because we do keep track of what we've done. And I was surprised to find that in almost two years, we have not done this. I know we've touched on it in different podcasts. Yeah, yeah. but not like an actual But not a, not a whole podcast <clears throat> given to uh, spiritual gifts. Bad Ryan. Aren't spiritual <laughs> gifts just something for first century believers? All right, everybody say it with me, you know. Well, actually, Pierce, <laughs> quit being so stupid. Uh, well, actually, Pierce, uh, we here at the 456 do hold that all of the spiritual gifts are, are still used by God for his glory. Uh, we believe that the spiritual gifts we're giving for the building up and the equipping of the church, but also so that through the spiritual gifts, people would know that Christ was the Messiah. And, um, and so, uh, we, we want to talk about spiritual gifts today and, uh, and we want to spend some time just kind of discussing that. And so, Micah, you want to? I think you should lead us off. Give us some, Okay, yeah. So, Or do you want me to ask you a question first? Cause, yeah, go yeah, for it. Yeah, do that. So, Frame it for us a little bit. So there is a, a conversation that has gone on for a while. It's, it's something we call cessationism, which means there are people who believe that some of the spiritual gifts have ceased, mm. hence the word cessationism. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's like the question you asked in the but Ryan Pierce. That's kind of what that's based on. There's mm -hmm. there's people who say, um, what's the passage? Is it Thessalonians? Well, well first Corinthians the, 13. The first when the, well, he says when the perfect comes. These yeah, first Corinthians ceased. 13. Oh, first Corinthians? Yeah, it's right there in that context. What does it say? So uh, 1 Corinthians 13 says, love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where no, that's there is, not what I'm thinking of. It is. Oh. Where there is knowledge, it'll pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, oh, yeah. the imperfect disappears. And so a lot of people will argue that the perfect here is the scripture yes. uh, put together as a book. It, it can't be that. <laughs> because the next part says, now we see it as a poor reflection in a mirror, but then we will see him face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. That is clearly not just having the Bible. <laughs> the perfect seemingly in this text is obviously Jesus. The return of Christ. The, and, yeah. the idea, and I think this is a great place to start for spiritual gifts. The idea from 1 Corinthians 13, which I mistakenly thought was Thessalonians for whatever reason, I don't know is that when Jesus comes, there's no longer a need for these gifts. Right. And I think that's the premise. Like people got to understand that the gifts have a purpose and that mm. those purposes are now for us in the right. body of Christ. Um, well, he says these three remain, faith, hope, and love, uh, in true. contrast to the gifts that won't remain when Christ yes. returns. Yeah, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Um, but in terms of like how, we, how, the, how the gifts are used within the body now is, is, has a purpose is what I'm saying. These yeah, aren't just sure. like, like willy-nilly things that happen. I think, uh, I mean, just good, like quick history lesson, if you will, is there was, there was, there was this like uber charismatic movement that happened in like the sixties, I think, um, that without going into the details of it, basically scared off a lot of, um, a lot of the evangelicals that weren't in the charismatic camp. And so that's where you see the split now between like Pentecostals and people like Southern Baptists is where like one group's like, uh, like holy rollers, like, you know, crazy off the wall, like um, doing nut stuff in your worship service. That was the, then, that was my skate team's name. I'm just kidding. Holy, holy rollers. Rollers. Yeah. <laughs> that was my rollerblade team. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the flip side is, you know, like someone like a, a Southern Baptist who isn't even going to talk about the Holy Spirit and we don't, yeah. we're uncomfortable talking about gifts. That's why the tension has been there for a while. Um, and then even in the cessationist camp, I feel like. So go ahead and talk really quickly while you're on that about what they believe has ceased and why. If the cessationists will believe, will say they believe the uh, what they call they call it I believe the miraculous gifts, so things like healing and tongues, um, have ceased prophecy, um, because totally give you my opinion, they I think a lot of them filter what they see those gifts as being from the perspective of what they've seen since that charismatic movement in the sixties. So instead of filtering it through the scriptures, like what is what do those gifts actually look like? I often hear responses like, well, I've seen these people speak in tongues in the worship services. That's not what I think. If that's what tongues is, that's not, that's not something that Got needs it. to be the case. I've seen, they're like, I believe Jesus healed. I believe the apostles healed. I don't believe people heal today. And they will often say, because I never see it, but you and I, Ryan, have been to other parts of the world where we've, I haven't, I haven't personally watched someone do this like miraculous healing right in front of me, but I've heard story after story after story from yeah. firsthand from people in Southeast Asia of God doing these insane things. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times it's filtered through just what we see. So we have American Western Christians saying, 
we don't believe these things exist anymore because of our experiences. Um, and then based loosely on a text from 1 Corinthians 13 that obviously isn't even speaking of what they say it's speaking of. They say it's speaking right. of the scripture. It seems to be pretty obvious it's speaking of Jesus. So right. all that to say, to just kind of start, we're not cessationists. No. Um, I'll say, well, what, what we mean is we don't see any evidence in the New Testament that these that these gifts have ceased. Right. I'll say that that way. Yeah. But we believe that the spiritual gifts that God gives us have a purpose within the body, which we can look at in 1 Corinthians. Yep. In Romans. Um, and probably from Ephesians as well. Um, and first Peter and first Peter. And I'm sure we're missing one too, somewhere in there, but they have a purpose. And then that's the intention. I think that we should have conversations about the spiritual gifts. At I, I hear too many people talk about spiritual gifts and they start with, do these things still exist or not? And mm -hmm. I'm just telling you right now, that's, that's a side conversation. Like you need to establish what the new Testament says about the gifts first. Yeah. And then you can have those other conversations later. Right. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things that's, I think, super important in this discussion, it, based off of 1 Corinthians 12, a couple of points. One, ah, there it is. Hey. Sorry, it's um, late. So he, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was late. Uh, he, he frames this. So one of the things that I want to point out is, um, you kind of touched on it. You called them miraculous gifts, Micah, that some cessationists will say that some of these miraculous gifts have ceased. Uh, you'll hear other people, I think maybe from the Baptist side or whatever, they'll say, oh, it's the charismatic gifts. I don't believe in the charismatic mm. gifts. So there's a Greek word that's charisma. Um, and uh, and what's interesting is every single one of these gifts in 1 Corinthians is called a charisma, every single one of them. Mm. So when we say, when we make a distinction and say, well, there's charismatic gifts and there's normal gifts, like that's not a distinction the Bible makes. So every single gift listed in 1 Corinthians 12, so preaching and teaching, those kinds of things, mercy, uh, giving, those are also charismatic gifts according right. to scripture, okay? Mm -hmm. same, same Greek word. But, uh, but God has arranged the body as he sees fit. And then you'll notice here- this in 1 Corinthians 12? Yeah, 1 Corinthians 12. So 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, to each one, so talking about the body, uh, let me back up to 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but one spirit. There are different kinds of service, but one Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them and all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. And so I think that's a really key thing is yep. that this, these spiritual gifts are given for the common good, that there is, there is an, an intended benefit for the body of these gifts. And then, uh, okay, that is important. First of all, to remember, like, I think to recognize here is the yeah, context go. of common good is not general common good of the mm. world, but this is common good within the body of Christ. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and then he, uh, he goes on to say in verse 18, in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted as them to be. he chose. Right. If they were all one part, where would the body be? So he's going to go on to talk about two things that are really, really important, I think, here towards the end of chapter 12. One, we can't say that any part of the body doesn't matter, yep. which I think is a great argument against cessationism. So mm -hmm. uh, cessationists go, I don't believe in this gift anymore. Based off of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, I don't think we have the right to say this part, mm. this part of the body doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Uh, this gifting doesn't mm, exist that's anymore. A good point. Uh, so the moment you say that we don't need this part of the body, it, it, we've said it a lot, uh, and Pierce, Mike and I had this conversation even before you came in, but we've had it now since you've been part of us for the last decade. But this is an old conversation for us, Micah, that you and I don't have the gift of tongues, but if someone was in our body of believers who had the gift of tongues, we it would probably freak me out if it happened in the middle of service only because I haven't experienced it authentically but we also wouldn't knock it down. Like we wouldn't mm -hmm. slam it down. Mm -hmm. Now we do believe based off of chapter 14, there we has to be it. an interpretation. Yeah. And then we three know, I think the Bible well enough that we could take that interpretation and weigh it against scripture and know if that was val yeah. valid or not. But honestly, if someone spoke in tongues and somebody got up and said, the interpretation of this is that, that Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm like, okay, awesome. <laughs> Let's roll with that. And I think something people forget too, in the end of that section, he says, um, Verse 22 of, is that 14? Yeah, 14, 1 Corinthians 14. He says, thus tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. Or prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. If the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues and outsiders or unbelievers enter, will they not say you're out of your minds? But if all prophecy and an unbeliever and an outsider enters, he's convicted by all. He is called to account by all. The secrets of the heart are disclosed. And so falling on his face, he'll worship God and declare that he's really among you. In other words, there's, and he actually goes on to talk about Israel a little bit later too. And that's, it's partly a sign for Israel. Yeah. Well, so, 
What's well, interesting, a couple of thoughts on that, right? So tongues, let's, uh, can we do a sidetrack real fast on sure, this? Yeah. Okay, so the section you just read beginning in verse 22, we really have got to begin in verse 20. So he says in chapter 14, verse 20, brothers, stop thinking like children in regard to evil, be infants, but in your thinking, be adults. In the law, it is written through men of strange tongues and through the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people, but even then they will not listen to me. And then the text that you read, Micah, that tongues are a sign for the unbelievers that they might be convicted and come to faith. Now, here's what's interesting. This Old Testament quote, through men of strange tongues and through the lips of foreigners, I will speak to this people. This is a reference to what God is about to do in um, the Old Testament and it is uh, uh, probably Isaiah. It's Isaiah or Jeremiah. Jeremiah, it's probably already taking place, so it's probably Isaiah. Um, and, and so this is, he's talking to the Jews about how Babylon's going to come and take them into captivity. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, I'm going to bring, he, he says a lot about the Babylon, Babylonians. He says, I'm going to bring a tall, sleek skinned people against you with tongues you know, that you don't understand, basically to rebuke his people who have descended into idolatry. And his hope is that through this stern hand and these people of foreign tongues, that the Jews then will repent and come to faith in Christ, which is exactly what he says right after this, yep. Micah, right? That, that the tongues are so that people will repent. Now, if you, if you take that, if you take the Old Testament text, I'm going to say it's Isaiah. If you take this Old Testament quote from Isaiah, and then what Micah just read about this is so that the unbelievers will come in and will, will repent and understand who, who Christ is. And then you lay that over Acts 2. Mm. So you've got, you've got these Greek-speaking Jews from all over the world, right? Um, all these different dialects, all these different kind of nuanced languages who have come to Jerusalem for Pentecost. Peter and the rest of the apostles, maybe the 12, maybe 120. It's hard to tell from the text that mm-hmm. there's 120 in the upper room when the Spirit falls on them. So I'm going to say 120. Uh, but they begin to preach. and That's a lot of tongues. I know. And the crowds say, man, we hear them speaking in our own language. And then the crowds repent and put their faith in Jesus. Yep, there you go. And and so like, this is exactly that. Here are some people now speaking in foreign tongues. And those were seemingly like Jews from all over the world who were coming for for the fast, for the feast. Right. And that's what it happened, right? To, to yeah. observe the feast, yeah. and then they come in, and so and so. Point B, maybe like back to kind of my original thought is we oftentimes have conversations around the gifts that aren't rooted in the text, mm-hmm. right? Like we 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 want to say, well, what does the Bible say about tongues? And we're so ready to talk about whether tongues exist or not, right? Or what it looks like that we forget that there was an intentionality and purpose, right? And we miss that as the premise a lot of times yeah. in these conversations. Yeah. So if if you're going to come to us and say, I mean, if you want to have the discussion, we're totally open to it. But if you're going to come based off of chapter 13 and say, well, I'm a cessationist because, or if you're going to say, I'm a cessationist because I'm just not comfortable with it. I've never seen people operate in it correctly. That people, people misusing or abusing a gift doesn't preclude the fact that there is an authentic yes. uh, gift, right? Or we would probably not even say misusing a gift. People that are... Um, fabricating a gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure it's, I'm not sure it would be like, mi- like someone who actually has a gift of tongues misusing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think I'll tell you this. Cause but I'm not, maybe if there wasn't an interpreter. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying yeah. like in my, in my background of like, you know, in, Pentecost, Pentecost. Yeah. Like yeah. The, the family, like I, I've, I've seen it and I think that there's a lot of people who say they speak in tongues. They don't have the gift of tongues is what I'm saying. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Um, just like I think there are people who say they're gifted as preachers who aren't. Yes. And yeah, I, I mean, want to, Give y'all a warning that if somebody ever stands up on Sunday morning and starts speaking in tongues and nobody immediately stands up and interprets. You're going to. I'm standing up (laughs) and I'm just making something up. (laughs) Okay. Okay. But if it's not according to the scripture, I will then rebuke you. Simpler pod, YouTube, subscribe. (laughs) Notification. Whataburger, two for 10. Like, I'm just anything. If it happens, pause. I love lamp. So we can get the video camera out. Oh, man. We got to film that. Got to film that. When when, when else do you get that opportunity? You know? Yeah, right. (laughs) And that person's like, that's not what I said. Like, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> well, um, so the two things, uh, one thing from 1 Corinthians 12 is we can't say we don't have any need for the body. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and, and so I think that that addresses kind of the cessationist. The other one is the whole body can't be an eye because then where would the sense of hearing be? So I think that this addresses the extreme on the Pentecostal side where it says everybody needs to speak in tongues. The whole body can't well, be and, one thing. And that they actually take that from Acts. Oh, do they? Yeah, we're, uh, it's the people, I think, who believed in 
in John's message, mm -hmm. and then the Spirit comes and they all speak in tongues. Am I missing that? Like, there's this place in Acts where the gospel yeah, yeah. comes and everybody speaks in tongues. Yeah, there's three places uh, that that happens. Um, but what I would argue, so those, let's talk about that. That's okay. really great. So the first place that uh, that we see we see the gift of tongues with the apostles in Acts 2. Mm -hmm. um, and that is among a Jewish community of foreigners, like foreign Jews who have come from all over the world. We see it again in chapter 8, I believe. And this is when um, some of the disciples, I think in this case, primarily Philip, he's gone into Samaria. And so he's preaching to those who are part Jews, but also part pagan, and they're worshiping God along with idols. Uh, and so the Samaritans were not well liked by the Jews, but Philip's preaching among the Samaritans. And then, uh, Peter shows up and he realizes they haven't received the spirit yet. He prays for them and they speak in tongues. And so that's among a Samaritan culture. Oh, yeah, I was thinking of. And then, uh, I think you're thinking of Ephesians. Um, it's not in the book of Ephesians, but it's in Ephesus where Paul comes in Acts 14 or 15, something like that. No, maybe Acts 19, but Paul has come to Ephesus. I think Acts 19. And he's preaching there in Ephesus and he goes, he goes, what have you been baptized into? And they say, we've been baptized into the baptism John. of John, John the Baptist. And he says, have you heard of the spirit? And he goes, man, we didn't even know there was a spirit. So he mm -hmm. baptizes them and then they all speak in tongues. And here's my thought. This is a thought and, and I'm open to all sorts of discussion on it. But what happened in Jerusalem was clearly the work of God, right? These apostles, the, the tongues of fire came and the, and and the Samaritans were a group of people that were half Jew, half pagan, that weren't well received by the Jews. Right. So when salvation comes to them for the first time, oh, they sign. speak in tongues to show that it's the same thing that happened in Jerusalem. And Ephesus is Asia, so only pagan. Right. And to show that the same God that they received is the same God from Jerusalem. So I think it's a sign in all those places that it's the same work, huh. the same God. I never thought about mm. that. That would make total sense though. Yeah. Especially because even Paul repeats it here in 14. Yeah, as that it's a sign to the unbelievers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. And so I, I think that that's so, what's happening. And then the next question they would ask—I don't want to spend too much time on the tongues on this episode—but was is it the beginning of uh, is it thirteen? Yes. If I speak in the tongues of yeah. men's and angel, men and angels, but have yeah. not love. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I think that's a different conversation. To be honest, mm -hmm. I think you could have so without so those of you who would ask like, what about this? I think it's, it could be another conversation. I don't 100%. know if we talked about that in that episode or not. Uh, we probably did. I don't know, a little bit. But anyways, that, just to try to cover the basis on that, because I feel like the the miraculous, what we're calling the miraculous gifts tend to be the focus of conversation. Yeah. Which is kind of what we're trying to say. Instead of the like, gifts holistically. Yes, like mm -hmm. the intention and yeah. purpose of the gifts. Like what are they what, what are they seeking to accomplish? What what we miss is that uh, all uh, that, that all of the gifts comprise different body parts. And the way Paul talks about it, or he they're analogous to body parts, you know? And so the way Paul talks about it is there are body parts that seem like they have less honor. There are body parts that seem like they have more honor. Same with the gifts, right? So some people want to put more honor on a certain gift or less honor on a certain gift. And he says, but we need them all so that the body can function well. Uh, here's another thought that I have and uh, knock it down if you need to, but um, it, when I was growing up and we would take, golly, man, like I remember doing it a couple of times in youth, we would take like a spiritual gift, gifts inventory mm -hmm. in college. It was a really big deal to do that. Right. I, I think I'm probably kind of against those now. Uh, I just don't know that I like them. I think they're a little bit sketchy. What I grew up being taught was that you're going to have one gift and maybe kind of another secondary gift. And those are your gifts. But when the Bible says that the spirit gives gifts as he sees fit, I really have come to believe like those 120 people that spoke in tongues on Pentecost, there's no indication that they continue to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe that the Holy Spirit gives gifts as he sees fit. And so yeah. any one of these, and and if you took 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12 and Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 4, depending on how you count it and which translation, you're going to get between 19 and 22 gifts list, listed. A couple of thoughts. I don't even know that those are all the spiritual gifts. There's nowhere in the There's, Bible that it says. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't say that the, that's all of them. Right. And then second, so let's, I'm, a, I'm coming from the assumption those might not even be all the spiritual gifts. But then the second thing is I can't, I can't even be certain that the spiritual gift I have today will be the same one I have tomorrow because right. I believe that since there is a purpose in the spiritual gifts, and that is the building up and the equipping of the saints and the reaching of the lost, it, I might be in a situation tomorrow where it it is beneficial for the spirit to give me a different gift tomorrow 
that I didn't have today. And to make it, yes. And to make a point on that, I feel like that is the, while I think we would all agree with that, mm-hmm. I feel like it's the rare case. Yeah. Like my yeah, ge- yeah. total guess, my guess would be that if, if you, if you ended up going to India again for, but instead of two weeks this time, you went for three months. Yeah. There's a good chance that, Spirit might be gifting you in a different way to sure. benefit the body there in India. Um, yeah. But the majority of us who are staying put in one place, you've been in the same local church for a while, you're in the same community of believers, I think that your giftedness is probably shaped around that. You know what right. I mean? Like how you fit in that group. And I think, here's what I think happens with a lot of people is people are so scared of this conversation um, as believers that they don't recognize that they have a gift. I think you see this, this is what Paul's trying to say, like the, the, what we would call, some people would say the insignificant gifts. Right. They'll look at someone like you, Ryan, and go, well, I don't have Ryan's giftedness. He knows the Bible really well. He knows how to buy Converse. Like, he, <laughs> you know, he, he's, you're, you're good at counseling. All these things that we would say are part of your giftedness. You're a great teacher. Um, they would say, I don't have those things. So like what I have is insignificant. And instead of recognizing, no, I'm part of the body. Mm-hmm. My gifting, however the spirit is gifting me, is as important as what you're doing, Ryan. Yeah. And that's well, the that's the misnomer I think that that hinders a lot of people. I think that there's a lot of local bodies that suffer without knowing they're suffering because people aren't recognizing that the spirit is gifting them for the for the common good. Yeah. In in the body. Well, you know, some of those gifts that I think that people think too lightly of, Romans twelve uh says we each have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Prophecy, that's mentioned of course in First Corinthians, but it says if serving let him serve If teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's giving, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's mercy, let him do it cheerfully. So like, we, I don't think that we think about these as gifts, but to me, these are some of the most important ones. 100%. Because like, or to me, they they have, I think the point to make is that they have as much importance as all the other gifts. Yes. But I'm, let me, let me put an asterisk on that. To me personally, (laughs) these are some of the more important gifts uh, because while I have, a, I feel like a gift of teaching, I'm also, I also l- tend towards pessimism. So without plenty of people in my oh, life. Okay. Sorry. You mean like you benefit from those gifts? Ryan Todd Dowglish. Not those are the most important no, 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 gifts no, no, no. to you. You're right. saying you gain the most benefit personally right. from those. Ryan Todd Got Dowglish it. finds that. I was like, the, how in the heck are those more important to no, you? No, no, no. <laughs> you just said they're all equal. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thank you for the clarification. But for me You're as an individual rose. person. It has been the people who were in my life who were encouragers that kept me putting one foot in front of the other in my ministry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it has been the people who who were Give. givers that yeah. enabled me to do ministry. And so, like, I I look at these. There are people who are like, "Man, I can't heal. I can't speak in tongues." I'm like, "Yeah, but you're generous. Yeah, yeah but you're kind. You're an encourager. You're full of mercy." And though, like, for a guy who's wired like me. Those gifts have had the biggest impact yeah. in my personal life. I see life. what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And and so so you know don't don't downplay a gift that you have. There's a um, depending on the translation, leadership or administration. Like the three of us would say, we don't have we don't have we're not administrative. Well, if it's administrators, no. If it's leadership, yes. Yes. So that's right. It, there you go. it depends. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's someone's <laughs> yes. take of what that word means. Right. Yeah. True. Well, back to what you said a second ago with downplaying. I think a big part of that too is a, is a, is a perspective shift, which is what we're which is what we do here on Simpler. Um, <laughs> a huge perspective shift on that is that when we focus so much on, I I don't have my perspective of a good gift. Right. All of the subjects in that sentence are you. Yeah. Whereas instead of when we understand the reasoning for the gifts and we understand who gives the gifts, all of those subjects are the Holy Spirit and His people. Uh, and God's people, the, pe- the people of faith, yeah, um, and the intentionality of the gospel may it be to build up His people or to be a light to the lost, yeah. And so, and th- and neither, all, none of those subjects are on you. And so, and when whenever somebody is like, "Well, I didn't, I didn't get one of the cool gifts. I didn't, I didn't get healing, or I didn't get that." But yeah, but but man, look at how the Holy Spirit's using you to be generous to His yeah. people. Like, look at how the Holy Spirit is using you to give. Look at how the Holy Spirit's using you to encourage. Like, um, that is a great way to 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 reposition people's mindsets, but also to encourage you guys listening and watching. Watching, um, it's a big, massive perspective shift is that these gifts, our mindset should not be on us, but our mindset should be on the reasoning for the gifts and who gives them right. um, in the midst of them. So, and maybe to, to that point, like going. recognizing that this isn't even our choice. Yeah. yeah. Like we are vessels of, of how would him? you be yeah. jealous about something if it's, oh, not even, it's like the spirit saying like, no, I'm, I'm not giving you the gift of teaching so you can be in front of people. I'm, I'm 
giving you the gift of generosity. Yeah. Yeah. So to be generous. And, and when, when we, when we function in that way, when we function in, as the people of God with this humble mindset that, that Paul and the writers of the Testament continually point to, we're not jealous or envious of each other at all. We're just, we're functioning together. Right. We're you functioning are. in unity yep. of like, oh, thank God that you're generous because man, I got to go teach over here. Like, right. man, we're, let, let's work together for yeah. the glory of God. And I feel like that's part of what we, we try to do as pastors at the 456 is, is recognize people's either giftedness if it's outright obvious or maybe mm-hmm. tendencies that make us think this is their giftedness and put them in positions that allows them, yeah. that's the wrong way to say it, uh, give them venues mm-hmm. to, to be able to utilize that gifting well. Absolutely. So I think a lot of times in, in our modern church format, because it's so, too often like, like a business, mm-hmm. um, you, you, the tendency is to put more weight on what looks like the glamorous gifts. Yeah. You know, sneakers with preachers and, the, yeah. All the disc golf guys are giving me crap now because I started using that Apturo to rent a car. You can get like a you can get like a Infinity for the same price as you can rent like a Prius. So like, wow, well, now I get the Infinity. So Dude, get the Infinity. Sometimes I show up in these like, <laughs> you know, these like, not spending much money on it, like sixty yeah. bucks a day for a luxury car, and they're in the, saying the new Instagram is not preachers with sneakers, but preachers with with luxury cars. So <laughs> start, start, a, start a channel That's for <laughs> me doing that. But in the modern in the modern church, sometimes if you're like if you're the service, the person who's got the gift of service, um sometimes we think, well, that's only the people who have an extrovert personality who are going to stand at the door and greet people. No, no, no. The the importance is uh, of the gift is recognizing that you might actually be the person who like goes and helps somebody move mm-hmm. or you go and like serve someone in another way. You're like making food for somebody Then nobody else in the entire church knows that you did that, yeah. but it still has the same importance. Even mm-hmm. when it's, that's what we forget. Even when it's unrecognized, it's for the common good of the body of right. Christ. And that's Absolutely. what I, I just kind of get sick of, of the glamorous gifts being put up in the front. Mm-hmm. So called, yeah. Glamorous. So what we're calling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I don't even think they're that glamorous. Like, who in the world, to be honest, would pick um, being one of the Ephesians four people, right? You mm-hmm. know, like why would you, oh we got to go to that? I guess yeah, now that I, I said it, but like why would you pick to be like an a, apostle, a prophet, an evangelist? Why would you pick to be in a position where people dog you all the time and just rail on you, and your job is basically twenty four hours for? pay that's not super great did you get to wear cool shoes you do get to wear cool yeah. shoes <laughs> and sometimes drive luxury cars that's true man. For rental cars i'm just saying like that we wouldn't be doing what we do unless we feel like god had called us to it Absolutely. oh yeah this, we yeah. wouldn't like step back and go okay if i got two options for a job i'm taking the one that's like like low pay and rougher and the other one that's like high pay and easy life you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah not yeah, that yeah. we have hard jobs right i'm just saying like no. in general like that's you you wouldn't be picking this unless you're narcissistic and just want to stand in front of people. Absolutely, which is well, which stupid. is which exactly. is probably the the preacher who has the really big mansion and it's probably not then a gift of the Holy and Spirit. And he's, and, he's got yeah. like fourteen jets and you know really cool shoes. And yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but Micah Micah mentioned uh, Ephesians four, where it talks about he buys them on clearance. So yeah. Exactly. It's fine. I found him a Goodwill. Yeah. It's okay. They got him a Ross. They were a gift. <laughs> they were a gift. My plane was a gift. Exactly. Yeah. From all your generous donations. <laughs> uh, uh, seriously, side note though, a rant. Those guys piss me off because they give <laughs> they give a bad name to everybody else. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like people are like, oh, you're a pastor. What about this guy and this guy? Screw those guys. You know, yeah, it's like exactly. I'm just trying to do the work of Jesus here. Right. Robert uh, sent me a a video the other day and it's some guy he's driving down the highway and he's like, look at this house. He goes, it's a huge house, big house. It's a mansion. He goes, that's even bigger than a mansion. He goes, you think like the president's going to live here or CEO of some multi-million dollar company? And he's like, he's like, no, that's a preacher's home. And it was massive. It was insane. Was it for real? It's preacher's home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was in Louisiana. He he just said, "Hey, I just want to say, hey, state of Louisiana, y'all, y'all need to check this guy's tax returns." You know, like he was <laughs> like, he was like, but uh, yeah, it's just I, I, well, okay. I don't even mind like stuff. Like it's not yeah. even wrong to like, I, I also think that, and there's a lot of places where pastors get shafted by their churches because their yes. churches think they should be working be for free or be poor the rest. Like that's a dumb yeah. perspective. Well, it's unbiblical. It is unbiblical. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I just, it's the guys with the, you know, the G5s or what is it now? G7s. I don't know what, what they're up to now. Is, and yeah. G's, GXs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that, that are like, that, that give that a bad name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Give a bad taste. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, well, Ephesians 4. It, yeah, so Ephesians 4, talking about what we kind of call pastoral gifts or teaching gifts or whatever, says uh, 
he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. The implication there is that pastors and teachers might be holistically, Same. but it could be five things, but it's probably four things with pastors and teachers being one thing. Uh, and here's why he gave them these gifts to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ would be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the son of God to become mature and complete attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And so that's what these gifts uh, were given for. And maybe more specifically, those, I think in, a, in that Ephesians four, he's saying that those people who are gifted that way are the gifts given to the church. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. We would say these are gifts, but I think it seems to be pretty clear that he's saying the gift to the church mm -hmm. are the apostles, prophets, mm -hmm. evangelists, and pastor teachers. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Have we never talked about that before? Maybe a little bit. I need to look at it. I mean, some it more. seems. I think you'll. I think you'll be. I, I feel like this is one of those ones where you'll be like, "Okay, I see what you're saying." <clears throat> Got it. That those. That's the intentionality. So I think that that's that's why we would say that these gifts tend to be people who are in positions of leadership within the body of Christ is because that's the intention of, of those people to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Yeah. Gotcha. So not negating that those are gifts. I'm just no, saying no, no, like, I'm that's with like you. I'm with contextually, you. it seems like that's what, that's what he's saying there. I'd have to look at it more. Yeah. yeah. Off no the, I can't off the cuff. Y'all can give us your comments and thoughts on that. Too. Yeah. That's weird. We haven't talked about that. Uh, maybe in passing. We've had so many conversations over 20 years. You're right. Uh, yeah. So a point about Ephesians four, mm -hmm. like if if you're someone who's a cessationist, then you don't believe in the apostles and prophets anymore, mm, right? Um, and you you would say something like those things have died. And while we would say like I actually know someone in Southeast Asia who I would probably call an apostle, sure, um, not someone who is like special. This I would say that this is different than the apostles. Um, maybe the same giftedness, but like in the reference to like the apostles, for example, when Paul says I'm an apostle, I think that it could be twofold. Like I think he's a, including himself with the 12 minus one plus one, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> um, but I think there's also an essence of what the, the, the term apostle means, like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and I think, so I think I, like, I know someone I think who would, who we would like could de define as here's someone who's functioning as an apostle in Southeast Asia. Um, we can talk about that some more if you want. Well, I, I mean, I think that, yeah, I think that one of the problems is the word apostle. I think it has so much kind of cultural meaning um, mm -hmm. that we've assigned to it, but I'm checking it right now okay. because I'm rusty so on it. So I'll go to, I'll go to prophet. A lot of people have trouble with the term prophet being still today because they're like, mm -hmm. well, um, we have the word of God. We, there's no longer a need for prophets. Right. Prophets have always only done one thing. They've always been people who just proclaim to God's people or whoever God tells them to. They just tell them what God has said. Right. Like that's it. And so modern day prophets wouldn't be people who are just pulling stuff out of their butts, their Balaam's butts, but <laughs> they, <laughs> they would, you know, that, cause that's what you think of when you say, when someone says I'm a prophet, like you automatically are like, okay, whatever, buddy, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they're going to be like, God's telling me that you're going to have great fortune mm -hmm. or God's telling me that that cancer of yours is going to be cured. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, what the heck are you talking about? You know, like, are you freaking kidding me? Like you don't know that, you mm -hmm. know? Okay. Maybe there's times when God says that to somebody, but I feel like that would probably be more in the case of someone who has the gift of healing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, why am I going to prophesy that to you? If there's someone who could come by and heal it, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's anyways, so, but prophets have always only been people who say, here's what God has said. So right. a modern day prophet would literally only be someone who's telling people, here's what God has said. Prophets were always people in the Old Testament that um, always, the no, always were people that were um, kind of despised by the culture they were talking to, the people they were talking mm -hmm. to because of the message they were bringing. It was usually a message that wasn't the most like fun message to hear. Yeah, and I think yeah. you see that the same way today. They're... Um, <laughs> I think that's my strongest gift. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why, I think that's why it's awkward in conversation sometimes with me is because I'm just going to tell you, like, mm -hmm. it seems like this is what the text is saying. doesn't yeah, mean yeah. I'm always right, but I feel like my passion and zeal is to proclaim to people what God has said, no matter the cost. Like I, I'm going to, I'm going to be willing to literally go to my death for the sake of proclaiming to the people who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to, stand up in front of 
um, a mean group of old ladies who say we're going to have to sing <laughs> patriotic songs um, when I'm 20 <laughs> and when I'm leading worship at the church. And I'm just going to be like, we're not going to function in in worshiping our country when we've gathered to worship our God. Mm -hmm. That's 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 my heart because what's most important to me and my core, I literally feel like when Jeremiah in chapter 20 says, um, his word is in my heart like a fire and I'm weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Like that's how I feel about proclaiming truth, mm -hmm. um, what God has said. So I think that um, modern day prophecy isn't just someone pulling stuff out of their butts. It's just, mm -hmm. it's proclaiming boldly what God has said, no matter the cost. Um, healings, people, <laughs> I hear this argument from, from cessationists. Well, if there were still people that had the gift of healing, why are they not in the hospitals? Right. And I think what we're missing sometimes is that these gifts, um, what we would call, let me back up a little bit. When he says that these gifts are for the common good, I think that's how these gifts are intended to be used in the body of Christ. I think there are examples in specifically Acts, um, but Jesus maybe in a different category because it's Jesus. But in the book of Acts, like when Peter heals people, um, this is not within the body of Christ. Right. Right. So I think that there, there's, we would say that Peter, whether it is the gift of healing or he is just healing by the power of the spirit, the intention of that healing was not for the person to get healed. It was to point to to Peter as being someone who was associated with Jesus so that right. that person can know Jesus. So like it, the, the reason that I think, opinion, that there's not someone with a gift of healing in hospitals healing people is because that's not the intention and purpose of the gift. Right. The gift now is for the common good. Um, that's why I don't think that it's it's legit that if you if there's like a healing service, you go and get healed. Mm -hmm. I think that most of that stuff is bogus um, because it's not intentionally focused on what the purpose is. I, I right. think that there, I can tell you examples from Southeast Asia and you probably came from India and I've heard some from Africa of healings that have happened where that person gets saved. Like that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's the that's, goal. And then within the body of Christ, um, there's, there's this, I think this goal of like the common good. Like what if, anyways, I think just people miss this whole conversation with gifts because we're so wrapped up in all the modern day cultural nuances of the, of the conversation of gifts mm -hmm. that we forget that the text, the scripture actually gives us some intentionality what these are for. These aren't, these aren't just things we pick. The spiritual yeah. gift inventory, I yeah. took it and I was like, ooh, which one of these do I want? And I said, I'm like <laughs> changing my answers. <laughs> Can we just be transparent for a moment? No. I actually kind of hate my gifting. Oh yeah? It would be easier, so much easier in life to just kind of like fade off into the background and yeah. not be the one who just like boldly says certain things. Mm -hmm. um, does it affect me? No, like I don't, <laughs> but like it would just be easier. I, I literally, I've been through the, like two times in life I can think where I said, okay, I'm, I'm done like for now. I'm going to take a break from like ever having hard conversations with people. Mm. And it was the most miserable times of my life. It was literally like there was something boiled up inside of me. And I like, I, I like, I can't, I can't do it. Um, do I like going into those conversations? No. Yeah. Um, but I will. Yeah. So I think that, I mean, maybe some people feel that way about like the gift of service. Like, I wish I was a teacher like you, Ryan. I wish I was good at teaching. And I think we're missing- you knew all the details. Yeah. Which, <laughs> nobody wishes that. But, <laughs> but I think we're missing the point that, that God, by the spirit, is giving gifts as he chooses. Mm -hmm. So let's not regret our gifts. Let's not, um, when I say I, I wish I didn't have my gift, what I mean is, or my tendency for that gift, what I mean is I think it would be easier. It's not that I, that's the wrong way to say it. It's not that I wish I don't have it. It's, I, it would be easier to have a gift that just fades yeah. in the background than being the one who is the butthole mm -hmm. all the time. So two other things. I've always found this interesting. It's in Acts 15. Uh, it's, I, I, don't, I don't ever hear this come into the conversation when we're talking about prophets, ever. Um, and, it, and in Acts 15, 32, it says, Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the brethren. And I don't, I don't feel like that yeah, is language that's ever much. used for prophets. Like, like you said, Micah, a lot of times it's just like, you know, for telling the future, you know, kind of whatever. But like, it's more often uh, speaking the truth, speaking yeah. who God is, declaring what he is, declaring what's right, declaring what's wrong. But I don't ever hear people talk about prophets as people yeah, who true. are who are strengthening and encouraging the brethren That's true. with their gifting. Mm. Uh, two, and this is something that you two know as a pet peeve of mine, I, I really get frustrated 
with the translators who, and I'm learning this more and more. I'm not a Greek scholar. I'm not a Greek student. I'm barely a Greek student. Like I know like 12 <laughs> words. I know a few more than that, but I'm, I'm trying. But it, I find it disheartening maybe is the better way to say it. That there's a lot of words they didn't translate because I think if you just translate them, it changes things. So apostle has this stigma on it, but apostle is just the, it's just the English letters to a Greek word. It's not a translation. The translation is messenger. Mm -hmm. So if we called the 11, the messengers, yeah. you know, I think it changes this whole stigma we have about, oh, I don't believe there are apostles anymore. Because I almost guarantee you, if you went to somebody and said, do you believe that there are still people who are messengers of Jesus Christ? Then they would go, well, yeah, of course. But then if you said, well, do you believe in apostles? They go, no, 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 no. <laughs> Even though like that's all the apostle means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we went to Ephesians 4 again and we said, I believe that there are messengers. I believe that there are prophets. Uh, I believe that there are, what was the other one? Evangelists. And I mm -hmm. believe that there are pastor teachers. I don't think anybody has a problem with that. I don't right. think that rubs right. anybody the wrong way. But because we have... Uh, Again, Micah, this goes back to something you said at the very beginning of this conversation. A lot of our view on spiritual gifts is based off of culture and bias. And so if you had a good experience with an apostolic kind of a leadership, then maybe you're favorable towards, oh yeah, yeah brother so-and-so, he's an apostle and you venerate a certain person a certain way. But if you had a really negative experience, somebody who tried to take advantage of the church or malign the church, then you're like, man, I don't buy apostles anymore. Or if you venerate the 11 plus Matthias, to a level that the scripture doesn't and go, yeah. well, these guys were apostles and no one gets to be like them again. Then you you wind up in something that's not textual. It's just personal. It's just how you mm -hmm. feel. And so let's just translate the word. Like, I wonder if we had translated this word since the Reformation, like the last 500 years, mm -hmm. if we would have this, be having the same conversations about mm -hmm. what it meant to be an apostle today. Yeah. Like, you know, like messenger, you're a messenger. Like, and maybe that's what you meant earlier by people who misuse gifts. It's not that they're necessarily misusing the gift but there are people who are using the term apostle in a way it's part of a it, negative sure. way that yeah that is not correct yeah it's part of it for sure which could be totally someone who is does have the gift of being an apostle but sure is so yeah you're right it could be either way yeah although i feel like probably more often than not it's not this not the spirit no. giving gift in that it's it's something else so um I'm interested. To, I'm interested, Ryan, to hear M. Pierce. I don't know if we've talked. I feel like you and I have talked about that a lot. The Ephesians four thing that, that you've, the, you've mentioned it that the the yeah. people mentioned are the gift to the church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I I can't remember specifically the conversation, but I think that flows. I mean, just reading it again, again, not negating that those are gifts. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, th I think, I think the context here is, is very that much. God gave. Uh, yeah, he's talking about Jesus, and he says, "And Jesus gave the apostles to equip the saints." Yeah. So if you just, or sorry, the apostle the list, yeah, list yeah, yeah. He, gave, he gave this list to the saints. You're exactly right. So we'd have to take in the context of understanding these roles, these gifts here, these people from these other places, knowing that they are gifts and applying that to that understanding. But his point here is these were given yeah. to you. And my, I think my only thought with that, the reason it, it might have any significance is that I think this is probably why you see these people typically in leadership in local churches. Mm. And yeah, there's a lot yeah. of conversations I think that you could tie into that for sure, which we won't have for now. But anyways, I think like, I don't know if we're summing this up yet or not Pierce, but I think that there's, there's a lot about gifts in the scriptures that are rarely mentioned in the conversation of spiritual gifts. Yeah. Which is funny that we want to talk about spiritual gifts, but we don't often want to talk about what the scripture says about the gifts. We want to talk about our experiences with the gifts. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the simpler view would be for here. Well, I guess, yeah, the simpler view would be... There are gifts that the Spirit gives. There are gifts the Spirit gives. For the common good of the believers. Yeah. So use them. There we go. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think that's, I think that's beautifully put. Yeah, and, and maybe, okay, maybe here's a question someone would ask. Is like, um, how do I know what my gift is? So, yeah, question Spiritual gift inventory. <laughs> yeah, there's a website we can oh, point oh, to. Sorry, sorry. We all, we all went sorry, to those websites sorry, in college. Yeah, Simpler.com slash spiritual gifts. <laughs> yes, it's a $5 right. fee. We will tell you what your gift we is. We told you no more Patreon. That's actually, what we're, that's actually how we're raising money now. <laughs> that was a joke. Disclaimer number three of the episode. That was a joke. Um, question for you real quick. Uh, I I I was going back and forth with my iPad, so I don't know if I if I missed something. But common good for for the um, for the believers, um, would you say that gifts? I, I think we talked about this, but would you say that gifts are currently used 
to reach the lost and to to show who God is. I think we said that. Yeah, because we talked about I, healing I don't in the know, hospital. Well, I don't know if you can make any biblical case for that. Okay. I'll um, start with that. I don't. Okay. I can't think of. You might be able to think of one right. I can't think of any texts in regards to the body of Christ, what we're calling the church, that are post, um, post Acts two is what I'm going to say. The, I, I'm going to say the coming of the Spirit is the beginning of what we call the body of Christ. Yeah. Um, we, maybe that's another conversation. Mm-hmm. Post Acts two, I don't know if you could make a case for that, yeah. but I think that you could make what you could make is an assumption that that the gifts that were given oftentimes were, were the character of, were part of the person in a way that allowed them to interact with people outside the body of Christ. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, the, I don't think that's the yeah. reason for the giving of the gifts. I see what you're saying. Yeah, 100%. But you could um, say like, like yeah. someone who, someone who is, is a servant inside the body of Christ is probably also going to be by nature yeah. a servant and Absolutely. they're going to serve people in that way. So I, I don't think that's like, when you're part of the body of Christ, when you're around other believers, like mm-hmm. your giftings this way. And then when you're not around believers, like the gift, like the tendencies <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. just go away. I think that I mean, this, we can't know this from the scripture. I think some of those, I have no idea whether it's like tendencies we already have in personality mm-hmm. that God has given us those that combine with the giftings. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how that works, yeah. but I know that like, for example, the people I know that seem to for sure have the gift of generosity um, were always generous, even when they were like little. Yeah, yeah. These are people who like like one of my kids is like just always giving, mm-hmm. and I I don't know if that's just because the spirits like doing that at a young age, or if that's just tendencies. Yeah. So I think that there are to answer your question, there are things that like bleed over. Like, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna I don't mind having a hard conversation with someone who's not a believer. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not gonna use Ryan's term. I'm not gonna lose sleep at night if they like yell and scream at me. Yeah. Um. But I, I th- so I don't know if you can make a case from the scripture, but I think yeah. you could say that it bleeds over. I would be uncomfortable saying that, um, unless we can find some scriptures right now. I'd be uncomfortable saying the gifts were given so I could reach the lost. Yeah, maybe with the exception of things that were intended to reach the lost. Um, which the only thing is, which is maybe another conversation for later, is Ryan. We've talked about this before. The the definition of the word evangelist used in Ephesians four. Yeah, we're not sure if it's exactly how we tend to define it now. So I yeah. don't know. Let's just say hypothetically think, it is. Okay. Let's just say hypothetically evangelism is simply um, proclaiming the message of the gospel. Oh, okay. Um, if that's the case, then we would say that that gift is for that. But I, I would, the reason I'm like slowing in that is because I, I think that'd be weird saying the Ephesians 4 context is these are gifts to the church. Mm-hmm. And one of those is evangelist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a gift to the church in terms of like bringing people to Christ so they can be part of the church. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying like, I would have a really hard time saying definitively there's these texts that say these gifts are given to reach the lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a really, from personal experience, I think that's a really good distinction to make because um, I, there's just the way that, that, that uh, spiritual gifts were discussed Specifically in college, there was a story told, and I can't remember if there was if it was someone in our friend group or if it was a friend of a friend, but there was someone who, um, uh, on a mission trip, walked away and had a, co- a full on conversation with somebody, uh, and came back and they said, "Oh man, I got to talk about Jesus with that person. I got to do all these things," and they were like, "I met that guy earlier, and I had to have a translator. Like, I that guy speaks no, <laughs> like, he speaks not not a word of English. He only speaks Spanish." And they were like, "Do you speak Spanish?" And she was like, oh no, I don't, I took French or a different, a different language in high school. I, I don't I don't know any Spanish at all, but they both spoke to each other and yeah. they both understood each other perfectly. Yeah. And so like the response to that with, within the conversation I remember having, a lot of people were like, oh, did, have you had the gift of tongues before? And so the conversation went towards the gift of tongues. Um, and so I think that Okay, is, that's a good point. Maybe that actually, so I can reel back then, that would be an example of a gift that seems to have some specific impact because Paul says it on the yeah. last for unbelievers. So yeah, there's one. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, but I think that that's still in the context of like, it's still important to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is for the common. I don't know. Maybe we gotta go back and look at that again. Common good. I don't know. I'm not yeah. trying to throw maybe a wrench at anything context. by any means, but no, that for, we should for sure be one gift that seems to have the implication that the main thrust of it is to reach the lost. Mm-hmm. Which is weird of all the ones. Well, and would, would, did it say anything specifically about healing too? Because we mentioned that earlier about healing in a hospital in America versus healing in 
um, in a third world country and how in a third world country, like that's exposing, that's seeing people come to know Christ. Yeah. I mean, there's healing. definitely examples of that in acts again, or I don't know if that's like, that's, but you can't make a case biblically that we're doing that now. But I think that is, I mean, P Peter's doing that later. So yeah, yeah, it probably is. I mean, maybe, maybe first Corinthians 12 common good is more generic. I don't know. Yeah. I've always taken it in context that way because that's how he's speaking of it. He's speaking it to the, in, to the body of yeah. Christ. Yeah, but I mean, maybe In Ephesians 4, it's clearly the body of Christ. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah. So conversation to be had. For sure. You're welcome, um, people, for making it more dirty. Yeah. Not as clear. <laughs> well, I think, but, but, I, but all that to say, well, I think we have simplified it because, because of at least our circles, well, maybe not all of ours, because you mentioned kind of your, your, your uh, personal past. That's a dumb way to say it. Charismatic, <laughs> charismatic history versus like more of a staunch Baptist history with, with Ryan and I, um, or exposure. Uh, I, so much in regards to the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts was so free floating. Like when tongues got brought up, it was more so along the lines of like, well, what do you think? And it was just because, because it wasn't taught and I didn't know where to look and I didn't know where to turn in the scriptures. Like it was just a lot of like, well, what do you think? How do you feel about that? Versus and like actually going to the scripture. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that in regards to, I mean, I don't know, maybe the majority of our listeners are like, well, that's only you Pierce. But I, I think they, the conversations I even had in college and kind of growing up, that was how a lot of people, at least in similar circles where the Holy Spirit wasn't discussed, where spiritual gifts weren't discussed. Um, that's kind of how they felt. There was not really a solid ground to stand on. And there was so much of like a stigma to stay away from those things of just yeah. like, if I even talk about it and learn about it, then I'm thrown into the charismatic car category and I can't even go step foot in my Baptist church anymore because, because now all of a sudden I'm, I'm a charismatic believer and I'm no it, longer You know what's funny to me realm. too is a lot of times people like will, 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 will swing so far to the opposite end. Someone who like mm -hmm. grows up that way all of a sudden will be a Ryan's sports team growing up the holy rollers you know yeah, exactly yeah. you know there's, then, then it's like crazy opposite end and it, it, it's funny because rarely in those do i find in those two extremes the people filter their life through the scripture yeah it's just experiences they'll say mm -hmm. well well i experienced this it must be real exactly well i didn't believe in i didn't believe in like what's the most crazy thing now i didn't believe in like controlling demons through through blowing a chauffeur but then I experienced it. Have you heard about this? Mm -mm. No. There's these people who believe they can like. I forgot open. what a chauffeur was for a second there. Oh, so far, like, sorry, so far. <laughs> okay. I said it wrong. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, I was like, because <laughs> I heard chauffeur, and then I remembered what a chauffeur was, and I was like, yeah. okay, that's what he's oh, talking yeah. about. Yeah. More clear than that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this dude's driving you around like, oh, there's the demon portal. Yeah, oh, no. there's the close that one up. <laughs> But yeah, there's people who believe they can yeah. blow the shofar and it will like open and close demon portals. That's wild, man. <laughs> Why don't I ever get to meet these people? I don't know, dude. But anyways, but like you go from like, <laughs> I don't believe any of this to wow, I watched that demon portal get closed. I believe everything now. Everything. I'm going to put gold dust on the, yeah. on the pulpit. I mean, it's like, you know, it, it just goes extremes. And I yeah. think the problem is not that you're negating people's experiences, but it has to be filtered through the scriptures. Absolutely. Yeah. So simpler viewpoint. Um, it's the Bible. Use the, use the Bible. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives gifts as he sees fit. Um, don't be scared of them. Allow, allow, allow the Holy Spirit to use you for building up his oh, body. Oh, we didn't answer the question. Like, how would you know your spiritual gift? Oh, how would you know your like, spiritual Like, how gift? would you, if we're not doing an inventory, I think maybe oh, we should right. end with that. Um, thoughts, my thought would be like, I think that, I think you're already gonna, like, it doesn't seem to be like something that you just like pray for. It might be that you could, but yeah. there's not any implication. It's like something you ask for and it's given. It's just that the Spirit gives it. So yeah. my guess is if you put your faith in Jesus, the Spirit's gifting you. So it might just be you maybe maybe praying that God will help you recognize what that is. Maybe asking people questions like, hey, what, what does it seem like I'm yeah. I'm bent towards? And then also, I'll tell you this. Um, I think you probably could just look at your life and know. Yeah. yeah. I think you could your see your tendencies are. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, Those I would, are my thoughts. I would agree thoughts. with that as well. And I think something that, that we had said earlier in regards to how, how we're striving to function at the 456 is, is getting to know the people that are a part of us and seeing seeing those tendencies in them, seeing how they're functioning and trying to plug them into areas where they can be free to do that, free to free to function in that and kind of um, whatever whatever the gifting may be and see them kind of flourish in that. And so I think what that may be is is turning to your leadership and just saying like, hey, I've been a part of, this Bible study, I've been a part of what, if you're on the coffee team or whatever, like I've yeah. been, I've been serving, I've been doing this. You've seen me in conversations. 
what do you think my gifting may be? How do you make those conversations yeah. count? What you had brought up is asking people, yeah. turning to people that you trust in in your community and at your church, at your, um, if you're in college, may it be like a BSM type type thing. Um, and don't just take the first person that tell you don't. Yeah, exactly. Like continue to have ask around. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts on that, Ryan? No. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what could be simpler than that? What could right? be so could be simpler than that? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, dope. Cool. Do you guys have anything to add to spiritual gifts? You said, we said no specifically to that question, but now I'm going to ask a broader question. Do you guys have anything else to add to simpler gifts? Oh, I'm no. sure it's probably two no. or more conversations. There's a lot. I think, I yeah. think there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot more to it. I think we've actually asked some questions here that we haven't been able to answer yet too. So that mm-hmm. might be fun to come back and breeze this Absolutely. later and talk about Ephesians 4 being either eight, these people are gifts, maybe talking about First Corinthians 12, is this common good, just the body of Christ or not? Or, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. So, st- I mean, you guys, stay tuned, subscribe. If you guys want to hear more of these conversations, let us know. If you guys think that we didn't flesh out <laughs> a specific part of the uh, the discussion in regards to spiritual gifts, let us know. If you need a chauffeur, let us know. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> Head over to the social medias at Simpler Pod. Let us know all those things or where you are, subscribe, follow along. Uh, you're going to want to see what's up. Um, I'm looking over here at my camera, right above my camera. It's not like I'm not keeping weird eye contact with because a wasp is there and my boy Steven is loading up his salt rifle, mm. not an assault rifle, but a literal salt rifle I got it. to shoot a wasp. Um, are you going to shoot it? Ready? Oh, I wanted to knock the camera out so bad. You got to flip that thing down on the side. Yep. He's got a safety <laughs> for the salt. Cock it again. Try and cock it again. Yeah, there we go. Boom. Yes! That's right. That's right. That's okay. That we'll just we'll switch we'll worry. switch to, we'll switch to the main camera. That's that's my boy Steven. Uh hey, here we are. Steven's over there. We're at the Garden Audio. Go follow at the Garden Audio on Instagram. Go see what he's got going on over there. We might just pile up all the wasps from today. <laughs> should be a lot of them. <laughs> just uh, please don't. I got glasses on, so it'll protect it. We'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I've already I've already plugged our Instagram. But hey, you know what? One more time for our Instagram and Facebook. There's going to be links over there for the first ever Simpler Conference. That's right. Simpler Conference is May 13th and 14th of this year. We got six sessions coming at you where we're doing what we do best, making things simpler. We're going to have simpler merch. We're going to have coffee. We're going to have childcare. We're going to be diving deep. Guess what? We're even going to have simpler live. I'm going to be there. Ryan's going to be there. Mike is going to be there. Steven's going to be there. Man, it's going to be a great time. Go get registered at uh, to get the link. You can go to the 456.org slash simpler pod, and that will be where you can get registered. Guess what? 10 bucks. 10 bucks. How awesome is that? Super cheap, super affordable. You can get your spot now. Guess what? Only 100 spots. So you're going to need to get that spot ASAP. And if it's already sold out by the time you hear this and get there, follow along on social media. That's where we're going to be plugging in those clips, doing the deal, doing the thing. You know what? As always, keep Christ as core. What could be simpler than that? We'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Bye.